Top Democrats called on President Trump to cancel his summit with Vladimir Putin after the indictments of 12 Russian military intelligence officers for interfering in the 2016 election. Now many are demanding answers to what really happened in Helsinki, calling for increased sanctions on Russia, for the president's national security team to testify, and for President Trump to press Putin to extradite those 12 agents. Joining me now, New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez. He's the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Welcome back to Fox News Sunday, Senator. Good to be with you, Brett. Thanks for being here. You know, a lot has been made, obviously, about this meeting and the news conference in Helsinki. Uh, but here's what the president said uh, this week about actual U.S. policy after this. Look at the sanctions I put on. Look at the diplomats I threw out. Look at all of the things that I've done. Nobody else did what I've done. Obama didn't do it. Obama was a patsy for Russia. He was a total patsy. Look at the statement he made where he thought the mics were turned off, okay? The stupid statement he made. This is my last election for you. Yeah. After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. yeah. I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir. So, Senator, do you think U.S. policy toward Russia was tougher under the Obama administration or under the Trump administration? Well, certainly, uh, President Obama uh, created the European uh, Deterrence Initiative after uh, Russia invaded uh, and annexed Crimea. Uh, he, re he recommitted to the 2008 commitments NATO made uh, to ha having Georgia be part of NATO once they were ready and developed. Uh, he actually imposed a series of sanctions supported by the Freedom Support Act that I helped write uh, and did a series of executive orders. Uh, so it was incredibly strong at the time. Uh, I have to say that when I listen to President Trump say he's been stronger, uh, we had to bring him kicking and screaming to the CATSA sanctions, the, the Counting America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, uh, that had a 98 to 2 vote in the Senate, overwhelming vote in the House, that he didn't want to sign but was forced to sign because they had veto-proof majorities. Uh, and even so, there are about seven mandatory provisions of that law as it relates to Russia that the administration has not pursued. Uh, so uh, I would simply say that what I saw in Helsinki at a moment that the president could have challenged President Putin about the reality that his 17 intelligence agencies all unanimously agreed that Russia interfered in the 2016 elections, that they are in the midst of doing that as we speak in these elections 108 days away. Uh, that was a moment to challenge him on that, on Ukraine, on what's happening in Syria. And instead, the, the president uh, did not uh, show the strength uh, that an American president, I believe, should have shown at that moment. He says that he said that behind closed doors in that CBS interview uh, with Jeff Glor. Uh, he, what would you like, have preferred him do in the news conference uh, publicly? Well, I would have liked him to have said, uh, look, uh, President Putin, we know that you interfered in our 2016 elections and that you're doing it now. And uh, that's not a question. That's a statement. And here are consequences to it. Uh, if you want to uh, rejoin the world order and, and observe international law uh, and stop invading uh, sovereign nations uh, like Ukraine, uh, then we can have a pathway forward. Uh, but at the end of the day, there will be real consequences. And I'm glad that we're talking, but there are real consequences to your constant engagement in our elections that undermine our democracy. I would have liked, uh, Brett, for him to do what Chris Wallace, your colleague, did in his interview with President Putin. Which we'll see in just a moment. Uh, I guess his supporters say he may have done that behind the scenes. He may have not said the right things in the news conference. No, no one knows what he said behind That's the right. scenes because he took an extraordinary over two hours with only an interpreter, not even the Secretary of State. Do you with think him there's any upside? The head of national intelligence. Is there any upside to talking to Putin? Look, uh, it depends if you challenge him. Uh, now we're going to give him, you know, a red carpet treatment and invite him to Washington. To me, that's beyond comprehension. You can speak to adversaries, but at the end of the day, you have to do it in a way in which you challenge them. The president seems to want to be chummy with Putin instead of challenging him. He should be challenging him about violating international law. He should be challenging him about the massacre that's taking place in Syria. He should be challenging him about the, the annexation of Crimea and say, we will never recognize the annexation but of Senator Crimea. you you know that you don't know that he didn't do that behind closed doors 
None of us know, Brett. Right. I, okay, I, have so no, let's... I have no idea, but when you had an opportunity to show the world all of our allies, show NATO, uh, show the free world that you, in fact, were not supplicant to Vladimir Putin, but a challenge to him, you failed to do so. And then to come back, you know, it's too late, too little, and the wrong continent, and now change your tune once you're here versus when you were there standing alongside Putin. Let's turn to domestic politics. Uh, the Supreme Court nominee that the president put up, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, you have said that you will not vote for him. Um, Democrats are obviously pushing back. Do you believe Democrats can stop the Kavanaugh confirmation? Well, I think if the American people understand Judge Kavanaugh's record, uh, they will uh, rise up and that will stop his nomination. Look, here is a judge who has written that, in fact, uh, the president is above the law, that he can decide what laws are constitutional or not, which I always believed was reserved for the Supreme Court uh, under our system of government, and uh, therefore not obey a law if, in fact, he believes it's unconstitutional. He believes the president cannot be investigated while in office. Uh, he, this is someone who spent four years with Ken Starr investigating the Clinton administration. It's amazing to me that he has the view that a president so cannot be investigated. where are the votes going to come and, from and to so, push back? And so he has a series of challenges. I think that when people in the country know, they will raise their concerns uh, with their members of the Senate, including uh, Republicans. Look, uh, Do Democrats our, colleague, have our that... colleagues, Dean Heller in Nevada, uh, of course, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, who care about uh, women's health, uh, and others, I think, will have an opportunity to express themselves as to whether they want to support uh, someone who, in fact, would erode those basic rights. Do Democrats have regrets that Senator Harry Reid moved that vote to only requiring 51 for confirmation? I think Republicans will regret to, to, uh, to moving to 51 on Supreme Court uh, nominees. Uh, there will come a moment in which they'll regret that. And, uh, you know, uh, if this continues, we're going to have a Senate not as the founders of the Constitution and the framers of the Constitution imagine. It'll be just a majority vote institution like the House of Representatives, and then it will dramatically change the Constitution. Senator, you're up for a re-election in New Jersey this year. You could face a real race in, in blue New Jersey. Uh, but the energy and passion and really the grassroots of your party is on the progressive side. Just over the past few days, Senator Bernie Bernie Sanders has been campaigning uh, with the newest superstar of your party, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from New York. Uh, she was campaigning, they were campaigning in Kansas. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez has said capitalism will eventually come to an end. She says she doesn't mind being called a socialist. In her words, there's an Israeli occupation of Palestine. Uh, and they say, Sanders and Ocasio-Cortez, that their agenda is now the Democratic mainstream agenda. Is it? Look, that's their agenda. And, you know, under our democracy, everybody has their agenda. I've seen extreme right-wing agendas that I disagree with equally as well. Uh, look, uh, our agenda as Democrats is about ultimately making sure that we have an economy that works for everyone, not just the wealthiest, not just big corporations. Our agenda is making sure that we secure our nation, including our sacred right to vote, that it cannot be affected uh, by countries like Russia outside of the world. Our agenda is making sure that every family goes to sleep at night knowing that they have the health care they need to keep their family healthy and secure. That's our agenda. So you don't think there'll be this progressive litmus test in your party? Uh, listen, you know, I, I think that people care about uh, whether or not they have uh, an economy that helps them meet their hopes and dreams and aspirations, whether they have health care for their family, whether they can get their kid educated without being under a mountain of debt to get a college education. Those are the things that Democrats have been fighting for, will continue to do so, and I think that has universal appeal. Well, Senator Menendez, thanks again for joining us on Fox News Sunday. Thank you.